Today's review was sponsored by Sadie, one of my favorite sponsors, because I'm at her house this weekend and I still wanted to get a video out to you guys. Tell her she's a good girl. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Targets. Hello everybody, as you can see I'm not in my typical location. I am at uh, Sadie's house uh, this weekend taking care of her. Um, busy day, but um, we're still going to make a video for you guys. Uh, I do apologize for the uh, different lighting and the uh, audio if it sounds a little off, but uh, anyway, let's get into this. 1968 was a big year for horror movies and film in general. This was when the Hays Code ended and the rating system that we know today was put into effect. 1960s was that transition decade when movies started showing a little more violence and a little more sexuality, but when the rating system came to be, it allowed more freedom in having movies be more violent and have more sex in them. This was also a transition from classic horror into modern horror, and 1968 was a big year for that transition. Not only did we get movies like Night of the Living Dead and Rosemary's Baby, but we also got Targets, a movie that deserves so much more recognition than it gets. This movie was out of print for a bit, but it's been released on Blu-ray by Criterion. I am so happy to have this in my collection. The movie stars Boris Karloff as Byron Orlock, basically a fictionalized version of himself. Byron is an aging horror icon who feels that he's lost his place in modern Hollywood. He's looking to retire, but he's been talked into making an appearance at a drive-in where his last film will be shown. We follow him coming to terms with his place in the world and his desire to just want to enjoy his twilight years. Sammy, look around you. The world belongs to the young. Make way for them. Let them have it. At the same time, we're following this disturbed young man named Bobby Thompson. He seems like this very normal individual. He has a wife, he lives with his parents, but he has snapped. He gathers up a bunch of guns and decides to go on a killing spree, killing as many people as he possibly can. Eventually, these two stories collide, leading to a very intense shootout at the drive-in. Trigger warning before we go any further. This is a movie about a guy who decides to go on a shooting spree, and with the state of the world now, those who are sensitive to this kind of subject matter might want to skip this video. Uh, this was also inspired by uh, the Charles Whitman shootings. Uh, this was an actual event where a real guy named Charles Whitman shot a bunch of people, um, if you're curious and want to look more into the incident, uh, by all means, do so on your own, but I just wanted to give people a slight warning before we, we got into it. Also, I'm going to be mentioning some interesting facts about this movie, but I take no credit for the facts that I'm going to say, uh, because I learned all of this stuff from a very underrated YouTube channel called One Fucking Hour. Uh, they're a great show, the people who run that channel, they do a lot of good videos. I mention a lot of interesting stuff about some good movies. Um, so, yeah, uh, they did a, a video on Targets, and I highly recommend checking it out. What I say in this video, I learned from that video. There you are. That, Who is that tapping at my oh. chamber door? Target was produced by B-movie king Roger Corman, and Corman was 
always known for getting his money's worth when making movies or producing movies. His films always had small budgets, but he made sure that the directors he hired pinched every penny out of that budget. So Roger Corman had 20 minutes of an old Boris Karloff movie lying around, and he hired this man, Peter Bogdanovich, to direct this film. He gave him this 20 minutes and said, film an additional 20 minutes of Boris Karloff, and then make a movie around this 40 minutes that you're going to have. So Bogdanovich came up with this idea of following an aging horror icon and a man who's going insane and going on a killing spree. The old footage is used as a movie within this movie. It's a creative way to take old gothic horror movie footage and put it into a modern setting. I like the creative way he incorporated this old footage into this movie and make it into something completely different. I see Targets as a perfect representation of the transition from classic horror into modern horror. The 60s in general was when we started seeing more realistic horror movies, more human horror villains like Norman Bates. In the 50s, there was Ed Gein, in the 60s, we had Charles Whitman, and in 1969, there was the Manson murders. These events affected film, resulting in more realistic horror movies. Good morning. Good morning, dear. Looking at targets, we have Boris Karloff playing an aging horror icon who eventually collides with the horrors of the real world. It does feel like a passing of the torch from classic horror into modern horror, but it doesn't feel like we're saying goodbye to classic horror. It's like the movie is saying, okay, the times of old horror is coming to an end, but it's not going to be forgotten. Old horror movies will continue to be celebrated. Boris Karloff is great in this movie, of course, because he's Boris Karloff. The character of Byron is a sympathetic character. He feels that he's past his prime, and he can't seem to find his place in this modern world, but he's still respected by those around him. Oh, I know how people think of me these days. Old-fashioned, outmoded. Well, not after this picture they wouldn't. You can't change your whole lifetime with one picture. When his old movie is shown at the drive-in, a lot of people come to see it, showing again that the classics will never die. He's so focused on the idea that he's past his prime that he can't see his legacy that will last forever. We identify with Byron because we're all eventually going to get old and feel that the world is passing us by think that the world has changed too much. God, what an ugly town this has become. I think it's a shame that people think this way. Just because the world is changing doesn't mean you can't enjoy the ride and appreciate the life you lived and still have. You can complain about the world changing, or you can look back at the positive impact you had on it. The Bobby character makes Targets a horror movie. His plotline makes this a disturbing film, not disturbing in a graphic way. Leave the light off. Bobby? Yeah. Why are you still up? Please leave the light off. Why aren't you asleep yet? I have a headache. The character seems very real. Bobby is a realistic psychopath. He's not Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, or Jason Voorhees. He's not Hannibal Lecter. He's just a guy who snaps and decides that he's gonna go on a killing spree. When we first see him, we instantly know something's wrong. We can tell that he's not contempt with his life. He has a wife. He lives with his parents. He seems to be a very normal person with a normal life. But there's something wrong. 
and as things build in the movie, we know he's gonna do something bad. He starts collecting guns. There are moments where he'll point a gun at somebody, and then we're wondering, is this it? Is this when he's gonna start killing people? Hey! What are you doing? You know better than that! I was just checking the elevation! That's just how accidents happen! Never point a gun at anyone! Sorry. I wasn't thinking. And then when he starts his spree, he's not acting like a raving lunatic. He's very calm when he starts killing people. And that's what makes it so disturbing. This is what Bobby has decided to do, and he's just gonna do it. Morning. What are you typing? Aren't you gonna go to work? The scariest scene in this movie is the shooting on the freeway. Bobby climbs up a water tower and just starts shooting people driving down the freeway. We're with him and his point of view for this entire scene. All this death is being seen from afar. We see cars swerve off the road and eventually glide to a halt or crash. We see people getting out of their cars and trying to run away. The moment that got me is when Bobby pulls out a Coke and a sandwich and just starts having lunch in the middle of his shooting spree. This struck a nerve. Again, it shows how comfortable Bobby is with what he's doing. The film builds up to a shootout at the drive-in. This is where the Byron and Bobby plot connect. This is an intense and realistic scene, with some people knowing what's going on, others being confused, and then you have people who are trying to warn other people what's happening, but they're afraid to get out of their cars. It's a great, suspenseful scene. Careful. Targets is a great movie. It's a perfect transition from classic horror into modern horror. All the characters are great, especially Byron, and Bobby is a frightening villain. This is a movie that I would recommend to anybody, not just horror fans. If you just want a good movie, Targets is a film to watch. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of 14, give or take because the shootouts get a bit chaotic, making it difficult to keep track. All the kills are gunshots, not much variety, but every one is well done. Boris Karloff is great as always. His performance is a good ending to a great career. Bobby makes me nervous, in a good way. He's a good villain that keeps you on edge. It's the realism that makes him and the shooting scenes so hard-hitting. He doesn't feel like a fictional killer. We have two interesting stories here. We're never eager to get to the Bobby story, because the Byron story is also very good. They work well together. And the climax is suspenseful and gripping. I'm giving this a solid 5 out of 5, one of the best horror movies of the 1960s a good mix of classic horror and modern horror. I cannot recommend this enough. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite 1960s horror movies other than Psycho and Night of the Living Dead. We all know those two are great, but let's show some other movies some love. This is The Maniac and Sadie here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. She's really tired. She had a long day today. <laughs>